What's this? A heads up display? That's crazy! Let's learn how to make that. So first we're gonna go into build mode and you're gonna note there's this, um, you know, glitch. So what you need to do to fix the glitch is you hit stop and reset has removed that. This world I like to play with in stop and reset mode. As you can see, there's kind of a lot of glitches with all these moving parts. So I just leave it stopped and reset when I am editing the world. Now the thing you need to note is we have, these are 20 heads up displays, one for each player. And so what you'll see here is it's a disabled trigger as well as a text object. And the trigger allows us to move the text object to the bottom right of the person's view. And so we've grouped this trigger and this text object to create a shell. Now the text object is running a script as well as the shell and the script running on the text object is local and the script running on this object, the full object, is regular. So we're gonna go through what that means and why we've done that, but let's start by looking at our shell. And so if we open up the HUD shell script, the first thing we're gonna look at is our variables. And you're gonna note we have a player ID variable, we have a text object variable, we have an IM player ID number variable. And so on each shell object, we have these labeled zero through 19, representing the up to 20 players this world can handle, with zero being the first player and 19 being the 20th. So by having this set, we set this on the object itself, not from the script, but it starts at zero, and then we type in manually one through 19 on the rest of them. Now when the world is entered by a player, what we do is run an if statement and we get the index of the player. You can find that on your operators tab. And when you scroll down to players, you'll see get player index and then getting player index gives us a number value between zero and 19. And if it equals I am player ID, then we know we have the player that represents this HUD shell. So then we transfer ownership of self to that player and we transfer ownership of the text object to that player. So self representing the full object and text representing the text object, which is running a local script. Now this is important. We'll get to that in just one second. Then we set player ID to be the player. Now, why is transferring ownership of the text object as a local script important? Well, because because local scripts do not run until they are applied to a player. And what that means is that it has to be on a player's headset to run. Normally, when you pick up an object or you attach an object to yourself, that's what causes the script to start running on that player. And so this transfer ownership of text to the player starts running the text script. Now that we've started running the text script, if we come down here to our HUD text script, you're going to see that when the world is started, because when the text script is attached to the player, it runs when world is started, even though this could be like some time into the game. Like if the player joins five minutes in the game, it'll still run the when world is started when the text object is assigned to that player. So what we do is then send my event to self with a one second delay. And this gives enough time for the player to have entered going through the shell script and then having the HUD text being applied as owned. And what this means is when my event is received, if the owner of self, which can be found on the actions tab, does not equal server player, and you can find server player under your values tab, and a server player basically just means that's running on the server, not running on self. All we wanna do is say, this object has been assigned. And we do that by saying owner of self doesn't equal server player. Then we send my event to the shell object. And the shell object is just an object variable referencing back to our shell. That's the trigger and the text object. You also note that we save my player ID as a player ID variable. We have a display string variable as well as a running Boolean. Now back on our HUD shell, when my event is received, we send HUD start to the text object with the player ID variable we saved when the world was entered by the player. And we confirm that that player represented I am player ID. So this is that variable we saved from before. Now everything else runs back on the HUD text object. And so when HUD start is received with that player ID variable, we save that player ID using the set my player ID to be that player ID that came through as a player variable. Remember when you do a custom event, you do need to click new parameter and PLID is just a label I have given it to represent which player has been sent through. And then we set running to be true. So we are setting the Boolean to be true. So that way we know the script is running. And then we send loop to self. And then if the world is exited by that player, we set running to be false, which stops the loop from running. Now, when loop is received, you'll see we check to see if running is true. We then move shell to the position of my player ID's head 
plus the direction vector of the head. So we're getting the forward of the head and then we're moving the position that we want it to be by that vector direction. So if you're not familiar with vectors, vectors are positions in the world. They're X, Y, Z values. And a vector can be a simply a position. It can also be, say, you take one position and you subtract another position. The difference between those two values becomes a distance vector. And if you normalize a distance vector down to one meter distance, that is called a direction direction vector. And so one meter in any direction from where the head is pointing is what the forward direction of my player ID's head is. So we divide that by two. So that way it's pushed a half meter in front of the player rather than being a full meter. And now that it is placed correctly, we rotate the shell object to look towards the head with the forward direction of my player ID with an up value of zero one zero. This makes sure it's straight upright. And so what we do is we're getting the forward direction of the player ID. So we know which direction is the player looking and we look towards. So we take take the shell object and look in the same direction that the head is facing, except we flip it by 180 degrees because if the head's facing down, we want to face up towards the head. So that is how that works. And to flip it, we simply used a plus symbol. So we do look towards for direction of my player ID with up of 010 plus the rotation value of 0180. With position and rotation out of the way, we set display. And to do that, we've used several text lines. We start by setting display to be a line equals right and then we do line height equals 50%. After that we use a series of slash and breaks to make a long line on the right side and then we set display to be display plus and we use an underline and then we add two tabs that creates an x symbol but that's two tabs there plus we get the user's persistent variable current score for that player and display it as a string because a number value needs to be converted to a string value. And this can all be done from your values tab. You'll see that you have get player persistent variable. You'll see you have variable as string. And then after that, you'll also see that you have string input down here as well. And then after that, we add again a slash 50 to represent how many ice creams have you found plus another slash to represent the right side slash for that line. And now that we've set the display string, we then display that string on self because this is running on the text object. And then we send loop to self. And you'll note there is no delay here, which means this is gonna happen almost on a per frame rate basis. That is incredibly fast. And that's why it looks so very, very clean. The last thing to note about a local script is that you need to hit this settings icon and change it from default to local. And once you've done that, you can hit save. And that is how you convert a regular script to a local script so it can take advantage of the player's instant tracking. And so the reason this looks so good is because it's running on a frame rate basis on the player's headset, which makes it constantly locked in place. So that way it's not like jittering around with server delay because it's on the local player's headset calculating the position it's supposed to be in instantaneously. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so you remember this weird bug? I think I figured out how to fix it. Use when world is exited by player on our HUD shell. So when the world is exited by the player, we want to transfer ownership back if it is my player. And we don't need to set player ID to player. What we do need to do is transfer ownership self not to player. But if we go to our values tab, we can grab server player and joystick that over to the right. And now that should work. So now let's try it out by going in as a player and the HUD appeared and now if I exit, oh, look at that, it worked. It's still stuck like frozen in place. It didn't like reset its position, but now if I go back in as a player and it reappears. Oh, we've done it, we've done it. So we have fixed the issue by simply adding a couple lines of code. And of course it does kind of do this weird getting stuck in place. But really quite simple. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. If you haven't already, please be sure to leave a like. If you have any comments, definitely drop them down in the comment section. Really appreciate that. Be sure to subscribe. If you hit the bell, you'll get notifications when we post new content. And we look forward to seeing you in Horizon. Bye!